What is going on everybody? Welcome back to your classes. My name's Greg. So excited to be back sharing with you. Today we're going to be going over driving for Uber specifically. Going to give you some tips and tricks and a few other things. Let's just go ahead and dive right into it. So one of the first things that you need to know is what type of car should you be using to drive for Uber and Lyft? I've driven probably about six or seven different cars and a lot more goes into it than just what's the most fuel efficient. One of the biggest reasons I say that is a lot of people would go right for the Prius. However, the Prius a lot of times in my opinion is not a good option because it doesn't have good trunk space. You'll start learning that airport rides are some of the best rides you can give and if you can't fit people's luggage, they're gonna have to request a new ride. The problem there is you're not gonna get paid for being there because if they cancel because their stuff didn't fit, that's on you and Uber is going to find a new driver that can actually fit their luggage. So the biggest thing that I always look for in a vehicle is actually comfort first. The main thing is, is if you're sitting in here for seven to eight hours a day, sometimes more, sometimes less, you have to be comfortable. Now I'm a relatively bigger guy, I'm six foot two, so a lot of more smaller compact cars really didn't work for me. I mentioned uh, about my Nissan Sentra in the last video. Well, that was a horrible car for me. Even with this seat extended as far back as it could go, I mean, it just made my knees hurt all day and the seat was not that comfortable. So you really want to make sure you're going to be comfortable while you drive. Obviously, for some of you, you don't have the luxury of choosing your car. But if you are in a position where you're looking to finance a new vehicle, that is the first thing that I think you should be looking for. Now, obviously, you always want to factor in gas mileage. So an Escalade might be the comfiest vehicle for you, but the reality is that's probably not going to be the best choice. Now, you do qualify for Uber XL and a lot of those bigger rides where you can have six, seven people in your car as opposed to normal vehicles only being able to host four, but that's not always a good trade-off because most people that are going out in that large of groups are usually college kids and they're usually going to try and cheat the system and all mash into someone's Honda Civic or they're just gonna drive drunk, unfortunately. Something we do not condone, that's why we're all out here. But trust me, I've seen a lot over the years, and that is what they're doing. Uh, numerous times where I would get a ride, I would pull up, and there would be seven or eight girls standing there being like, hey, you know, they'd give me some BS excuse. Oh, we, uh, the second Uber canceled, do you care if we all pile in here? I would say no because the reality is that's highly illegal for one and that's not something you can jeopardize yourself with. So the Uber XL in my opinion usually just isn't it isn't worth it. You know, it's not really going to pay off enough. In certain busier areas, it could be really valuable and that's another thing I would recommend is you should do a lot of research in your area. There's plenty of Uber drivers that have left reviews on what it's like driving in certain cities. So you should do some research as well if you do have a larger vehicle. But for the most part, you're gonna wanna go with a sedan. Uh, just a small five seating car, relatively good on gas mileage, at least 25 miles per gallon. The reason why I love my car, I have a Jetta TDI. It takes diesel, it's hatchback, so there's good trunk, trunk space, and it gets 41 miles per gallon. It is a great vehicle for Uber and Lyft, but unfortunately they don't make them anymore, so uh, you'd have to find one used. But something like that, hatchbacks are always gonna be great options, especially the ones that are fuel efficient. Um, like I said, at, at the very least 25 miles per gallon, uh, and then trunk space is very, very crucial and something you're gonna want to utilize. If you did want to go the option of Uber Black, which is a more luxury car, you just need a nicer vehicle, a luxury vehicle. It needs to have black leather seats. You have to get a, uh, it's a special license to be essentially like a luxury driver. And I have heard that you make really good money there, but the reality is most of you watching this probably aren't going to pursue that route. But that's the biggest rule of thumb for the type of car that you would drive. You just want it to be a smaller, compact vehicle that you can still be comfortable with. I would say something with decent enough features, at least some Bluetooth so that they can uh, 
make some music selections and not just be forced to listen to the radio. The fuel efficiency, comfort, I think you guys get the drift. So now as far as understanding the app, that's something that a lot of people will get confused on sometimes. I wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks to maximize your earnings. Now the biggest thing you're gonna to wanna to always pay attention to is if Uber is running any type of bonus, you'll see a lot of guarantees. The guarantees are great. Now what those are is essentially Uber's gonna say, give 30 rides and you'll make at least X amount of dollars. And if you don't make X amount of our, uh, dollars, they're gonna cover the difference. So if they if they guaranteed $1,000, uh, and you only made 600, they're gonna give you an additional 400 on top of that. The other thing is there's a lot of bonuses and streaks. So a lot of times if you give three rides within a certain area, they'll have, they call them zones. If you give three rides in the zone, uh, each ride gets an additional $15. Now stuff like that really adds up with time because if you hit these bonuses and streaks every day for a week, that could be an additional 60 to 100 bucks a day which obviously could be an additional, you know, four to five hundred dollars a week. That's going to drastically increase your earnings in the span of a year. So the bonus, the streaks are generally giving like three rides in a zone within a certain time frame. The guarantees are going to be making X amount of money for X amount of rides. And then the other thing you need to pay attention to, and by the time you watch this, this may change a little bit, but Uber's surge. Surging is what you always want to aim for. Surging just means there's more demand than available drivers. So they'll offer a bonus based on that demand, and you get that on each ride you give inside the surge. I've had rides where I made an extra $100, sometimes more, just because I gave a ride in the surge. You're generally going to see these after concerts, football games, any larger events, bar rush, that's generally when this type of stuff is always happening. Now, another thing I wanna cover is what do you do during your downtime? There is gonna be time where you're driving two passengers, which is essentially dead time, and there's gonna be some time, unfortunately, where you're just waiting for a ride. Now, one key component to this that I always recommend is you generally don't wanna drive around looking for rides because what'll happen there is sometimes, unfortunately, you end up just driving around and wasting a ton of gas before you get a ride. I recommend just staying in the area you're in unless you're in a dangerous area or you're way out in like some farmland, a place where you're probably not too likely to get a ride back. But if you drop off in a busier, uh, a busier area, the best thing you can do, park your car at the safest place you can find, just by a gas station, a restaurant, and wait for your next ping on your app. That way you're not wasting any gas in between rides. But another component to that is that dead time. Now what I always did is I started educating myself more and more on selling solar. And this is why I would recommend picking some type of side hustle or main hustle in sales or whatever it is where in that dead time, you can educate yourself even more in the process. Now if you don't have something like that, what I would say is, you know, it's up to you how you live your life, right? But you can either spend that time just scrolling through Instagram, or you can listen to an educational podcast or a YouTube video. You know, you can grow as a human and become a better person. You can grow in your knowledge, which will help you in the conversations you have if you're more widely diversified in your knowledge base and what you know, and that could lead to getting more tips. So another thing I would say is, don't just scroll through Instagram. Don't just waste your time. Bring a book with you, if anything, and pull out and read a chapter just in between your rides. There's so many ways that you can educate yourself and become just a better human being uh, through all the resources on the internet, even just while you're waiting for rides. Obviously, that's not going to be everyone's preference. If you just want to blow time, you know, by all means, scroll through Instagram. But again, the way I always utilized Uber was this is gonna elevate my life. I'm gonna use this to take me to a better place in life and I'm gonna excel from here and I'm gonna educate myself and become better every single day. Now, we talked about surging a little bit. Another thing I wanna talk about is surge hacking. Surge hacking was a term I came up with for a trick I'd learned 
for maximizing the most amount of money that I could uh, during those surges. So when those surges happen, there's generally a limited window of time before they go away. And the reason being is once that cloud pops up showing all the areas where you can make more money, all the drivers are going to start driving there, right? So it's only going to last so long. But if it's a bigger event, it could last for potentially one to three hours. And so where most people go wrong is they see the biggest amounts in the middle of the surge, the eye of the storm, and they want to drive right in there so that they can get this massive surge. The problem is usually wherever that is, there's a lot of traffic too. the middle of the concert and all the cars are backed up. And so by the time you finally get that ride, it takes you 30, 40 minutes to get out of there and actually drop them off. So the best thing you can do is how surging works is it's based on a dollar amount. So it'll be $1, $3, and it'll go up to as high as 12, basically meaning you'll make an additional X amount on each ride. There's also some uh, perks to that as well, that it's usually based off the mileage of the ride, so that number can multiply. So it's a lot more valuable if you pick up a lot of rides on the fringe of the surge where you don't get stuck in traffic. Those might be 3 to $5 than going right in the middle where it's 10 to $12. So for me, I would always just get right on the outskirts of it. I would decline rides that were right in the middle. I would take the ones that were on the outskirt and I'd be able to give four or five rides in the span of time that someone maybe got one done that was in the middle of it. So that's my surge hacking and another thing you guys should absolutely utilize when you're out there on the road. Now, another thing I wanna talk about is what are the best hours to drive? So this could vary by area, and this is again gonna be another reason why you should do your own research in your area and figure out what other drivers say the best times to drive. But for the most part, it goes like this. So Monday through Friday, I never liked weekday driving. I always preferred doing the weekends. You can usually make a lot more just driving the night shift on the weekends. So I a lot of times would, would go 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Sunday, I wouldn't go as long or as late. Sundays, I would usually do like noon to like 8 p.m. So I got a solid 32 hours in in three days. And a lot of times I was making 700 to 1,000 bucks just in those couple of days. But if you do want to do weekdays, which is still a good option, I just feel like you have to be a lot more disciplined with it. If you still want to do weekdays, um, you want to stick with the morning rush and the afternoon rush for the most part, the work rush. So mornings, I would start at 4 a.m. And this is where you got to decide, you know, it's like, hey, we can preach the flexibility all day, but if you want to really make money on this, you got to be out there at the right times. So on the mornings, you want to start at 4 a.m. and go till 8 a.m., maybe 9 and then I would turn off the app and go home and nap for a little bit. And then I would go back out at 2 and do like 2 to 7. So that's going to get you a good 9 hours. Obviously, you could cut that to 8 and lose an hour in the morning if you wanted or in the afternoon. But to get a solid 8 to 9 hours on a weekday, that is going to be the best way to do it. Morning rush, afternoon rush. I will say one thing I did for a while was Monday through Friday, I drove nights. And what's interesting about the nights is there's a lot of third shift workers that are getting done, um, and you can really take them to and from work if you time it the right way. And because there's so many less drivers out there, the nighttime driving can be a lot better. It can be a little sketchy, though. You can end up in some weird areas, and obviously at 2 a.m., that might not be your preference. But if you are a night owl and you keep a good tire iron or some pepper spray underneath your driving seat... I wouldn't worry about it, and I would go out and hit those hours as well. But anyways, uh, that's my tips for driving for Uber. I hope you guys enjoyed this class. Stay tuned for the next one.